Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Philip Hergovic advanced to 14-0 following a third round stoppage win over Amir Amatovic on the Devin Haney and Jojo Diaz undercard in Las Vegas. So this was a performance where Philip Hergovic tasted Amir Amatovic's power in that first round and decided, you know what? I'm just going to keep coming, walk through your shots as best I can to get my own away. So Philip Hergovic at times just neglecting his defense to land his own shots and the weight of those punches, it started to pile up. But it was a fun first round. Amir Amatovic came with ambition. He was trying to work the jab to the body and head. He was trying to sort of uh, just soften Hergovic up a bit. And he even uh, came with a couple of left hooks and looked for the right hand, often falling short, though, in the first couple of rounds as he looked to land his own power punches. But Philip Hergovic, and if you think about it in these terms, he was like an axeman chopping down a tree. He was just slowly chipping away with thudding blows. Philip Hergovic, as we know, very heavy-handed. He was looking to unload the right hand, following up with uh, left hook, sometimes the uppercut. But in particular, the right hand, he was just looking to uh, find the target. And he started to have more frequency in terms of it landing through the second round. And the weight of those punches was wearing Amatovic down and his durability was giving away. Ultimately, down twice near the end of that second round, and from that point because you knew that it sort of had that feeling of inevitability that Philip Hergovic was going to end this one soon and the bell rang as soon as uh, Amatovic beat the count for the second knockdown and into the third pretty early on Amatovic clearly still hurt um, he was doing the Eric Molina sort of ducking down routine which seems to be a bit of a theme from guys that face Philip Hergovic Hergovic six foot six often his opponents are a bit smaller six uh, two to six four that sort of stuff they like to sort of really bend down quite low to sort of uh, get out of the way as a result Hergovic is often punching down and sometimes he has been guilty of uh, hitting guys on the sort of side of the head and even the back of the head and that was no different in this fight there were a few moments of that he was uh, the referee warned him at times but um, some of these guys were putting themselves in harm's way by their head position where it was going uh, Amatovic took a couple of sort of cuffing shots but on the replay nothing really landed that sort of solidly in that final sort of flurry Amatovic down the referee says nah that's it Philip Hergovic now 14 and 0. So Amatovic, that first round, it was fun. He came to fight. And that was good to see because you don't want to see guys just coming to lay down. Because at this point, Philip Hergovic needs rounds. He needs to have, you know, build experience. But let's face it, as we spoke in the sort of lead up to this fight, this fight, or even when it was going to be Scott Alexander, and then Alexander pulled out um, about a week before the fight, not the sort of guys that Hergovic needs now. As I've spoken about before, when he had his first fight in 2019 on zone, it was Gregory Corbin. This opponent, Amir Amatovic, and basically everything in between, has been effectively the same level of opponent. Philip Hergovic is in desperate need of a step up. It's time that Matchroom and Wasserman, which co-promote Philip Hergovic, put their hand in their pocket. And I know some people get a little up in their feelings when I sort of say that and level a bit of criticism at both these promotional outfits. And some people are trying to blame the other promoter and basically say one has more blame than the other. At the end of the day, they have a stake in this guy. They need to put their hand in their pocket and overpay to get good opponents. And I'm not talking top 10 level opponents. I'm talking the steps, the requisite steps that he sort of needs to go through. So when he gets to that top level, he's got the experience to actually, you know, weather some adversity, which he will undoubtedly go through. This sort of level of fodder that he's being fed, he is deciding for the most part, okay, this guy is not a threat. I'm going to try walk through his punches. And he's willing to take some shots because he's good at good chin. And he just decides, okay, seek and destroy it. I'm going to just try to bang this guy out landing sort of you know all sorts of clubbing shots and just sort of really you know trying to beat the guy down and that's what we saw in, the, in this fight against Amir Amatovic he desperately needs someone that's sort of top 25 to top 30 someone who's durable can go rounds there has been talk that um, Zhang Jilei who called him Hergovic out after his last fight a week or so ago maybe that fight could happen for 2022 and let's face it both these guys need each other 
Zhang is basically, you know, in a situation where he hasn't been able to get some of the fights that he's wanted to. He turned pro late. Um, he sort of had a period where his uh, sort of promoters at the time, Rock Nation, weren't pushing him and doing the right sort of um, career building for him. He's been with Matchroom. They've given him OK opposition, probably actually um, better than Philip Hergovich. I mean, I think Philip Hergovich would you know, desperately like to have a name like Jerry Forrest on his record. Forrest has actually proved to be a guy in the past year or so that's actually put up some really good credible performances against Young. He battled back, got a draw. He just arguably beat Michael Hunter on a Triller card. So if it's not Zhang, how about someone like a Forrest? But someone in that t top 20 to 40 range that's durable and can give him some rounds because he needs a couple of those before he really steps up against someone that is really going to, you know, like a top level contender fight. Philip Hergovich is not the finished article. There's things to work on. And certainly when he steps up, he'll have to be a bit more diligent about his defense because he can't just try to walk through a big power puncher's punches. But in this case, he had a taste of the power from Amatovich and wasn't too worried, just tried to walk through him. Anyway, what do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Boxing underscore squared. I'm out.